A few months ago, I published an interview with Sonny J. Harris, one of the most legendary traders I know, someone who's been in the market for a while, multiple decades, and who really knows how trading works. She's got a trading style very similar to mine, but she uses a custom indicator she built over the years called Sunny Bands. And as you know, I trade Bulger Band for many years now, and I was intrigued by how she does things and what things is different with her way of trading compared to my way of trading. So she offered to show me exactly how to trade on a quick call. And this video is the recording of that call we had a few days ago, where she kind of showed me the Sunny Bands in details, things she looks for, and how she trades in the market on a daily basis. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's kind of like a bonus because I didn't plan to put this on YouTube first, but I thought it's good value and you might get something out of it. See how real traders trade, get away from the quick rich quick scams on YouTube and these people who are pretending they're making money trading but don't actually play as trades. So hopefully that's going to be useful. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you click the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified of future video. And now let's dive right in. So as you know, I've been using Bulgerband for multiple years now, but I'm very curious to see how you use your Sony bands. So I have a call on this. Oh yeah, it's different. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how, how different it is and like what I can take away from it, how different it's used. So uh, where do you want to start with this? All right, so let's go to, this is Trade Station, and this is a five minute chart of the E-mini. And the first thing I do is I, I add a study that, and I've sent you all these, uh, it's a paint bar and I call it day session because it shows me the day sessions and night sessions. And up here, there's a value called J key. Every user has their own J key that they have to put in there. And then if they are not living on California time, they have to put their time, uh, open and close times in here. So if you're on the East coast, that would be 0930 and 1615. And then you click default so that it sets your default values. And okay. And now you see the night has magenta and blue bars. And the day session has red and green bars. So that makes life a lot easier for me because I can see the difference in the sessions. And, you know, all the, all the indicators that I have, I've written for myself. I haven't written them to sell. That's not my primary objective. Trading is. So these things are... For, to make my life easier. So then we go studies, add study, and it's an indicator this time that we're going to put sunny bands on the chart. So we scroll down. Sunny has lots of versions of everything here. So you choose the current one, which I sent you. Again, you set your J key value. There are no times on the sunny bands, so you just leave it like that. You can, uh, this comes, I think, with it might come with false in there. If you want to be able to show commentary, you put these two to true. Then you click default again, so your your J key is set, and OK. And there's sunny bands. Now, the way I trade this is, this is today's session. So we the bars go up to the top band. We've got a green one that the wick touches the top band, and then it turns red. I go short. And then I write it down like this. Usually I can withstand this kind of a, a tick. You see right through here, my, my, the golden purple lines are called my dynamic moving average. So DMA for short. And when it's flat, I know that we're going to get a little sideways reaction against the flat DMA. And there it goes. And then we come on down and we touch the bottom band with this wick right here. So that's where I would go long. And then I write it back up. I've got another flat DMA with a bunch of gyrations back and forth. I stay with it all the way up to this going up on touching the outside band, coming back down on red, and I go short. On this one, the DMA is flat here, and I know that it's going to react, and it'll probably only go to the inner band. So I watch it go up to the inner band on a long, and then I go short again. And that's the end of the day. Now let me show you, because you asked, I want to show you Bollinger Bands. Now there's, you see how they don't really, but as they widen out here, there's no signal out here for you to take. Yeah. Right there's any band signal, as clear as can be. But the Bollinger Bands are way out of bounds. Over here again, way out of bounds. There's no way to read a signal off that. I mean, they're nice, but Bollinger Bands use standard deviations. 
which tell you where the market should go statistically, but they don't tell you where the market is going. And I use, I'll take them off, I use average two ranges. And the strange thing about this dynamic moving average is that it calculates its own inputs with every tick of the market. So every single tick that comes in causes the lengths inside this moving average to change. So whereas you might have, I don't know, 10 and 20 in Bollinger Bands, you're going to have 10 and 20 and 10 and 21 and 9 and 23, and it's going to be changing with every tick of the market just that fast. So it's Interesting. that's why I call it dynamic. It's dynamically adjusting its inputs. And unlike most other moving averages, I mean, I can show you two moving averages. Let's see. Well, V moving average two lines and if you trade crossovers of moving averages you can see the fast links nine and the slow links 18. these are the numbers that i changed dynamically so that they're recalculated inside the math of the uh, of the software so you can kind of see here this crosses over crosses over again crosses over again all during this largely sideways period you've got several crossovers but the dynamic moving average that I use doesn't have any crossovers. We'll go back over here. We've got another crossover over here. And look through this. Look at all the crossovers all through that. And my dynamic moving average stays purple on top the whole way. So I, I've had people tell me it's magical. So these dynamic moving average, they give you an indication if they're flat that the price will be sideways and if they're trending that the price will trend. And you mentioned at the end that they could also look at reversals. Or. Yeah, I have a little indicator, of course, that helps me with this. We'll go back to my initials again, S to H. And I've got one called Who's on Top that tells me all kinds of things real quick. You see, when it's dark purple, I've got a trend. When it's light purple, the DMA is moving sideways. So purple's on top, but it's moving sideways. When it's dark gold, we have a trend with gold on top. When it's light gold, we don't have a trend. It's sideways. So you can see sideways, trend, sideways, trend, sideways. All through here, look how light purple, no trend. So I keep that on my chart at all times. So on the, the bands, you've got sort of two layers. You've got the, an inner layer that's blue and then a bigger layer that's green. What's the difference between all those two layers? Good question. So when the dynamic moving average is gold on top, I calculate the two upper bands. There's this one, the blue one is 1.2 average two ranges away. And the outer one is 2.0 average two ranges. Those are, you can set those in the inputs in the indicator, but I've left them on this for years. I've been, I've been using sunny bands for 36 years with no changes, no optimizations, just what you see is what you get because it's dynamic. So 1.2 and 2.0 average two ranges from from whatever's on top. So if purple's on top, I'm calculating the, the bands from the purple. If gold's on top, I'm calculating the bands from the gold. So that's a kind of a strange thing about it. So then purple on the bottom here, so 1.2 average two ranges and 2.0. So the 2.0 gives you a extreme point that you can use for reversals. Mm -hmm. And do you wait for any kind of candlestick to show the price can be reversed at these levels? I wait for the candle to come down and touch the bottom band, which it does on this candle. And, and like here, it touches there. Here, it touches over here. And then I don't trade the night session. I, I won't touch it. And I'm not getting up early enough to trade this. This is uh, 3.20 in the morning, my time. So I don't trade. I don't trade actually until 7 o'clock in the morning. I wait for the open to settle down a little bit. And right about there's when I start trading. So when price gets to that 1.2 average true range, is it, is it based on you see a trend in the market? Or what does that mean? When price doesn't quite get to the, the 2.0, but gets to the 1.2? If it only gets to the 1.2, which is I call the inner band, then like back through here, it only gets to the inner band. That's telling me that price action is weak. If it can only get to the 1.2, it's weak. So oftentimes, if it's weak and it won't go beyond that, I'll trade it back to the DMA. 
So I'll go short here and trade it back to the DMA and then back up. Only goes to the inner band. Then I try to get it back down to the DMA again. It doesn't quite go there, but it gets awfully close. Turns green, I'm out. And then here we go, and we're now we're at the what, at the 2.0. Back to the DMA, back up again. Shows me it's weak right here because it only goes to the inner band. And sure enough, it collapses. So when you get to having like a very strong trend day, wouldn't the price be always like near the top of that 2.0 the whole day? Or if it, yep. Yeah. I, I've seen many days like that, where it just follows that band all the way up. And what's the process there? Because you obviously wouldn't go short too many times on that that upper band if price is always uh Yeah, if gold trending. is on top and price is up at these two, between these two bands, the inner and the outer, I'll stay long the whole day. Oh, interesting. So that moving average gives you an indication of who's on top and where the trend is likely to stay that day. Yeah. So you would be going short at that top, moving average is on top? If the gold is on top, then I'm expecting that the, any short to just come back to the DMA. So you see how this goes short right here just for a little bit? Comes back up, touches it again. Now it's at the inner, and it signals a short with this bar right here. And then I go short, even though gold's on top. Now I'm watching to see if it's really going to penetrate the DMA or not, and I'm cautious and patient and sure enough it penetrates it so I stay short. Let me show you the other indicator that I use for this. I call it my dynamic moving average histogram and again you would set your J key value there and there are no times on this one so you don't have to worry about that. This measures, this is my histogram and it measures the difference between the gold and purple lines. Okay so when gold's on top then gold will be above the zero line when it turns red, that's caution. It means that it might be going the other direction. So caution when it turns red, here it goes back again. And over here, you can see how these lines are getting shorter and shorter. The histogram gets shorter and shorter as it comes down. So it's telling me right here, this is red, caution, 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 caution. And I know that it's about to cross because those are getting very short. So it's about to cross over to purple. And sure enough, it does. So this is this is my confirmation. So when the bars are on top of the zero line, we know gold's on top. When they're under the zero line, we know purple's on top. And you can see it over here. Look at this. We've got a caution signal right there. Nothing happens. We've got a caution right here. And it starts going down. They get shorter and shorter and shorter, and they cross with purple on top. So we know that was a short trade. Interesting. So purple gives you the trend the same way as gold would do, but the opposite side. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's about all I do. I don't I don't look at anything else. I might put some Fibonacci lines on on occasion. I do watch the VWAP. It's pretty simple. You know, when you're doing it right, trading's boring. You just do the same thing over and over and over again. What entering near the uh, the movie average just be a good entry on, on like a trend day when you see price going like ha having that that golden moving average on top price is trending you get on the pullback on the the moving averages. Yeah, you see how it pulls back to the moving average there, pulls back here. It's too weak to get up higher there, and we go short. And I mean, I I have a number of clients who just like to trade it from the outer band to the DMA. They don't all trade it the way, same way I trade it. But the good thing is this, you can also kind of set your targets with these bands because you know price won't probably go beyond the, the 2.0, maybe to 1.2. Yeah. So watch this. Edit studies. If I look at the sunny bands and I change the inputs, there's a thing called text, J text. Where is it? Text on. So if I turn the text on by putting a one there, so it says one equals text on, I say okay. It puts the values of all these things out here at the right. So it tells me the purple's on top uh, from 12.45 today at price of 41, 42.50. The angle, now this is interesting. This is the angle right here at the last few bars. It tells me it's flat. It's less than five degrees. And it also tells me the difference between the inner bands is two points. The difference between the outer bands is three points. So I know from here to here, I've only got a maximum of three points to work with if it went from top to bottom. 
and then it gives me the values for the upper outer band. Then that we can we can uh, expand that. So it gives me the midline value, tells me purples on top, lower inner band, lower outer band, upper outer band, upper inner band, and I know exactly what those values are, so I can set those as targets or stops. Have you ever this these or look at these on currencies like the US dollar or some other instrument? Or are you using this only for the ES? I use it everything. It works on any symbol, any time frame. Give me a give me a symbol. I would curious to have a look at the US dollar as a test. What's the symbol? I don't know what it is. <laughs> dollar USD? I don't know. No. I don't have any idea what the symbol is. Because I don't trade it. Tesla. There's a five minute Tesla. You want to see it? Same thing on a daily chart. I trade stocks on daily charts. And then you can see Tesla on a daily chart. And you can see we're in a channel right here for the last few weeks. All sideways. And you can see lots of light purple. So purple's on top, meaning the bias is to the downside. And light purple means we're going flat. Right here, you can see that this this green told me that we were trying to come up which we did and then it turned purple again and it's a little tiny bit bigger not much which tells me we're probably going down so that's i mean and you want to look at it on a weekly chart anything works the other thing would be the same here you'll be going long and short at the extreme bands right exactly interesting and when the bands when the dma is flat we're looking for it to travel only to the dma and back and here's another flat one. Goes above it a little bit, comes back down. Ready? British down. USD. And there's a forex for you. Same thing, extreme to extreme. I use things I call attractors. I draw horizontal lines across significant places, which, you know, people call it support and resistance. I call them attractors. The moving averages are attractors. Fibonacci lines are attractors. Support and resistance are attractors. You see here, price hits it over and over and over again. So right here, we're bumping it up against the heavy attractor. I do a, a Sunday night newsletter once a week called Sunny Side of the Street. And uh, anybody that wants it can have one free issue just by giving me a call. And I do attractors and I do sunny bands and do all the analysis on 15 different markets. I can definitely see how these bands have an edge over Bollinger Bands and probably also like the Kethan Channel for sure. Right. Uh, so that, that that's interesting to have. Yeah, the channels are close, but it's a simple moving average. It's not a dynamic moving average. So the, these bands tend to follow the price a lot better. So what I'm seeing so far. Right. And you don't see all the crossover. You know, the sideways periods usually make every other moving average cross back and forth, back and forth. And this doesn't. If you were to go, let's say, long near the outer 2.0 band, would you go long straight at the, the touch on that band or would you wait for the candlestick to fall? I wait for the next candle to, to prove its direction to me. So if this is the blue candle, I'm expecting it to go up. If the next bar goes up, I'll go long. Okay. Very similar to how I do it. Interesting. And then your target would be next to that, that inner band or you're somewhere close to that? Well, because this was flat, I'm expecting it to be weak and only go to the inner band. So right there. Mm. And you see it comes right back to the DMA. And then it goes to the extreme band, back to the flat DMA again, and then back to the band. So I don't know where it's going to go next, but goes on top and it's getting longer. So that tells me it's probably going to go up into this range up in here. Definitely a lot there. And it's probably something I have to get the gold for myself and, and kind of explore a little bit more also. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good to hear you talk about it. You've got to see how, how you use it also and the way you kind of see it. So I've seen a lot there. All right, so I hope you liked this video. I hope that was useful for you as always. Don't forget to hit the like button below if you enjoyed the video today, if you got some value out of it. Don't forget to leave a comment below as well. It really helps the video to reach more people. And hopefully other people can come across this video and learn the right stuff in trading. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.